Well, as you can tell by the sound, I found some more waterfalls. I toured the Cuyahoga Valley National Park yesterday and introduced this uh, weekend of hiking with a visit to a rock quarry where they were um, quarry, quarrying the Berea sandstone. And it formed several waterfalls that I visited yesterday. And today I am in the town of Berea, Ohio, from which the sandstone is named and where it is, it forms the thickest layer. It's 200 feet thick here. It has been mined extensively. And look at the size of these boulders of the Berea sandstone. That one in the background there has got to be 30 feet across and 20 feet thick. And it has broke off this cliff and slumped into the uh, Rocky River. So this is no longer the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. This is the Rocky River Reservation, about 25 miles west of the Cuyahoga Valley National Park, but just as worthy of your visit. I'm only going to have a few hours here this morning to just uh, give it a, a, a light dusting over here. There's a lot more to see that I won't have time to explore. But the Rocky River flows from south to north and tumbles over the Berea sandstone here in several thick ledges, probably 15-20 feet thick each one of these falls. The one in the background is probably 15 feet thick. And yes, the highways and railroads had to span this gorge with several viaducts. And the one in the middle there, there's three of them here, the one, the second one from the foreground is actually made of blocks of this Berea sandstone that was quarried in this area. And the other two are reinforced concrete and are of younger age. Boy, this is a neat place. It's right by the road. If you go to the Rocky River Reservation and start at the south end of the park, there's a pull over here for the Berea Falls and there's an official overlook. But as always, I'm looking for the mountain goat, goat pass to take you a little closer to where the action is. So you can get down here safely it is an easy walk down off the official trail, and the unofficial trail is easy to find and easy to follow. So this is Berea Falls in Berea, Ohio. And I have gotten even closer to the uh, Berea Falls here at the Rocky River Reservation, just to give you a more intimate look at this waterfall. Again, it's a stair-step falls, and it plunges over several thick layers of this Berea sandstone. This is a neat place. If you're ever on the interstate going from Cleveland south, it's only a 10-minute drive, 15 minutes at the most from the exit, and I'll tell you what, this is a nice stopover, even if you don't have time to hike. This is just a really interesting place. If you like photography, and if you like nature and you like things that are not linear, this has got all kinds of little shoots and blooms. It's really interesting. And I will continue my tour of the Rocky River Reservation. This is southwest of Cleveland. And I begun this tour at the south end of the reservation. And the Rocky River flows north, and it came out of that thick layer of Berea sandstone. Now it's into a even thicker layer of shale. There's Cleveland shale here, and a few other named shale units that I don't have written down. So, um, probably at least 100 feet exposed right here. This river has undercut this bank, and many geologists have mined this area for fossils and found some large fish, fish fossils. Um, from the period called the Devonian Epic, or uh, Devonian Era, excuse me, Devonian period in the geological timetable. Many of them are, are um, displayed at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. There's also supposed to be quite a few shark teeth in the fossil record here, and some fish scales and plates from a platy type fish that no longer exists. 
I can't really find much right here. This is mostly moving water, but if I could get to one of these gravel banks, I could look for fossils. I don't know how much time there's going to be for that. What is across the river here is called Fort Hill. It has a loop trail with some views. And this is the other Fort Hill. If you live in southern Ohio, there's one that's very famous. Well, this is the other one. And um, I don't know if there's actually Indian mounds up there or not. Um, we'll see what's up there. And I have climbed to the top of Fort Hill at the Rocky Reser River Reservation. There's no evidence of Indian mounds up here, so I think the name might be uh, for another reason. But they have a beautiful staircase built to the top here with many wooden steps anchored into this unstable shale slope and um, keeps it from eroding away from all the foot traffic. But here we are looking down. Again, this shale is very unstable. It tends to break off in huge slabs and make its way down into the rocky river here. And very few things can grow on a slope that's this steep. Especially if it's constantly tumbling down into the river, which is what happens at high water. So here we have a, uh, this is what they call a, a shale slope. And if we were uh, east of the Appalachian Mountains, this would be called the Shale Barren because the lack of precipitation in that area can create a unique habitat for some desert plants that actually live in the eastern United States. And I have a feeling I'll be uh, filming one of those Shale Barrens in the future when uh, my opportunity to travel in that direction uh, becomes uh, uh, when the opportunity allows. But this is uh, what a shale barren would look like. Get a lot of cloudy days in this part of the country and fairly high rainfall, so I don't think this would have the shale barren plants that you have east of the Appalachians. But this is what one looks like, and boy, this is definitely um, an interesting geological formation. If you're interested in shale, this is lots and lots of platy shale here. No fossils to be found right here, but with more time I'm sure I could find some.